we have had many, many magic nights here from the first performance by Frank Sinatra in 1939 to the last performance of um, Lord Buckley, who had his, his, uh, his cabaret card taken here, leading to his tragic death, to the uh, first performance of Charlie Brown with uh, Terry Berghoff and Bob Balaban, launching the career of one of our ushers, Billy Crystal. Every night with Reverend Billy's show has been equal to that excitement, and I know that you'll enjoy the show as much as we did enjoy having Reverend Billy here. Thank you.
forefront earth. Hallelujah, church today. Amen. You know the first rule in our lawless church is that we forgive each other in advance. We just got to. Stop their consuming. Oh. Of years. 
second of your history. You seem to not want to be here. <laughs> there are, there, there are some, some among us who want to live. We, we feel questions and maybe leave this place with some practical steps we can take. Earth, hallelujah, share your power with us. We know we're made of the earth. And we remember that. Amen.
through an incredibly complex series of interactions involving a vast number of different components. Themselves, made up of smaller molecular components, exhibit, exhibiting their own dynamic behavior, such as the ability to catalyze chemical reactions. Yet, when these components are combined into some larger unit, such as a cell or a tissue in your body, Utterly new and unpredictable properties emerge. <laughs> These properties include the ability to move, to change shape, and to grow. These patterns appear in structures ranging from highly regular crystals to relatively irregular proteins, and in organisms as diverse as viruses, plankton, and humans. The phenomenon in which components join together to form larger, stable structures having new properties is known as self-assembly. And it is observed at many different scales. Now, are you ready to do an experiment with me? Okay. I would like everybody to join hands with the neighbor next to you. Now, I'm not talking about some sort of religious joining of hands. I'm talking about... A very strong joint of hands. Yeah. Reverend, Reverend, come here. Can we stand? Always sit. Like this. Lock, lock your arms. Lock your arms. It's okay. You can stay, you can stay seated. You need to lock your arms with your neighbor. No, no, no. Let, let your arm relax. Let your arm relax a little bit. Now, I would like the person at the end, I would like the person at the right end, my, my right, so this end of every row, I would like the person at this end of every row to pull that direction. Just the person at the end. Okay. Good. Observe, observe the results of that experiment. Now, relax. Now, I want to do the experiment again, but we are going to change a variable. The variable we are going to change is how tightly you're gripping your neighbor next to you. I want everybody now to really strongly flex, flex those biceps, flex those biceps. Now again, the person at the end, I want you to pull. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Did anybody observe what I observed? Did you see that the first time when we were complacent and relaxed, the person when they pulled, not a whole lot happened, right? Maybe the person, one person over or, or the next person over felt a tug. But when we were 
locked, tightly connected to each other. And the person on the right pulled. Did you feel it all the way across? Yes. This is an example of what Professor Donald Ingberg calls tensegrity. Oh yes, tensegrity. It is a form of self-assembly. Now, tensegrity has been observed in many different places, such as geodesic domes. The capsules of viruses, that's what makes the capsules of viruses strong. But, it is a philosophical concept, and I think that it can apply to larger, more abstract connections, like the connections between people. So remember, we can self-assemble, and it's the connections between them, between the different particles in the unit, which is very, very important, and can make the difference between floppiness and strength. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Benjamin Taylor. Right. Dr. Benjamin Taylor leads something called the Bio Bus. He goes around to high schools around the country, which have lost their science funding. Uh, he uh, has state of the art uh, microscopes and computers and so forth in the bus. And people come out to him and he teaches them. Thank you for your work, Dr. Benjamin. Now, we need to raise up a person from our community. Beatifying him toward the heights of actual Earth Alluia canonization. Well. He has willingly accepted this elevation well we offer our saints to not kill them before sainting them so we got to do it the ladies and gentlemen Christopher Hedges our saint being stricter with our own thinking. You teach us to be. Uh, some, somehow the bullshit goes away. <laughs> In my own case, that's really quite something. <laughs> I'm wondering if you could just take this wireless microphone, <laughs> trembling with radioactivity, and just 
talk to us, please. <laughs> well, thank you. First of all, I have to say. honor for me because uh, I actually graduated from seminary at Harvard. I'm a Master of Divinity, and I was rejected for ordination. I, uh, when I went to seminary, I thought that we were called to fight on behalf of justice, and I moved into a housing project in Roxbury where I ran a small church and commuted into Cambridge to go to school at Harvard. Uh, and I soon found that institutions, uh, especially the church, <laughs> like the poor, but they don't like the smell of the poor. Oh. 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 All about empowering oh. through all sorts of people they never met. Mm. And that kind of hypocrisy, hypocrisy soured me uh, both on the institutional church and on the seminary itself. Uh, it was a time uh, in the early 80s when fascist regimes were rising throughout Latin America, mm -hmm. the dirty war in Argentina, mm -hmm. uh, Pinochet in Chile, uh, uh, in Rios Mont in Guatemala, oh, yes. oh, yes. uh, the death squads in El Salvador oh, were killing oh, yes. between 700 and 1,000 people a month. And I felt, as someone who was a writer and committed to justice, that that's where I belong. Mm -hmm. And so I went before my ordination committee after finishing my academic work and they asked me what my call was. <laughs> and if I had been a good seminarian, I would have told them that that was to become the assistant pastor of a Presbyterian church in northern Massachusetts or something. <laughs> uh, and instead, I told them that I was going to El Salvador to be a freelance reporter <laughs> to cover the war. Okay. It was a yeah. long silence. And the uh, head of the committee said, we don't ordain journalists. <laughs> My deep regret is that committee is not here tonight. <laughs> We're online. <laughs> you might be sitting there watching Harvard. I finally been inducted into a church I can respect. <laughs> Yes, we do, and this lights it up the pie. Don't you 
Where are we? <laughs> this is the ecosystem of Lights up on the audience, please. Oh, that's not an audience. That's a congregation. Hallelujah. These are believers out here. Our religious agnostic believers. Amen. Praise be. Children. Haven't we all? got a story in us where we were with the earth yeah. out in a forest on a desert near a lake up in the air the edge of a cliff by a stream commiserating with an animal something happened is that a domesticated animal? <laughs> Keep the, keep the farm animals <laughs> out of the stage wings. <laughs> We're going in another direction. <laughs> they broke my mood. I had it. I had it. <laughs> that little sheep, he kind of came in there. Go back there, Billy. Bye, Oh, by a lake. <laughs> On the edge of a cliff. Thank you, brother. Get me back there. We need your testimony now. We need a, an earth story, but something miraculous happened to you. Yes. And maybe you couldn't explain it at the time. Maybe you can't explain it now, but you're going to share it with us. <laughs> we need an earth story now. Talk, talk to the church. Experience is coming up in your memory right now. Let's see it in your eyes. Hallelujah. I have a story. All right. I mean, if you want. <laughs> All right, Lizzie. All right, Lizzie. Should I use one of these? What? I use one of these. Should I? You were going to meet halfway? Well, oh, you got a microphone. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so... Somebody here, Lizzie, somebody here does have a story. We're not going to let them... Oh, no, you know, oh, we're not going to let them off the hook, are we? Can I step on some toes? Do you want to go first? I think it'd be interesting to actually step on your toes. Go ahead, Lizzie. Go ahead. Um, so one time when I was um, about 17, I was in a wildlife park, like safari park in Ohio. <laughs> it's just one of those sort of improbable situations. It just feels weird. Um, but really cool. So I'm, I'm walking up to this area where there's a bird, and I, I wish I remember what the bird was called. I'm lacking in detail here. But it was sort of a white, like, egret-type bird looking, I think, to me. And there was a sign that described um, some characteristics about the bird, one of which was that when the bird is um, either happy or I think also in love, perhaps, or both, <laughs> um, that it made, it did this sort of dance where it would like bob its head and, and flap its wings. So I thought, um, I wonder if I do, if I do the dance, I feel a little dorky <laughs> right now, um, if the bird would, would do it too. So I, so I, <laughs> <laughs> I start like to, I'm like, what would this look like? Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Is the bird here today? <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. Let's cite someone from our congregation, Lizzie. 
does it? That might incite somebody from our congregation to just just look at it this way. You know, the, the 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 natural world is a miracle. It's unexplained, as is our life is unexplained. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that, that's just mysterious. That's just a mystery. So just sit here. We just have to get through. Hey, here we are. I'm preaching here, and there's a man in front of me. Come in, kids. Tell us what your name is. Hello, my name is Raphael. Oh, I gotta stand up. Yeah, stand up. All right, I'm here to testify. When I was a, a young man of 15, I was always a city boy, and uh, one summer I was sent to Alaska. Or I chose to go to Alaska. <laughs> to, see, to see what the, the mountain life was like, I, uh, I went for 42 days. Wow. Consisted of three different backpacking trips, and I remember the first one I had so much, excuse me, but shit. I had a backpack, I had stuff to put on my lips, I had the bug spray, I had the, I even maybe some hair shit. <laughs> but, you know, and I had this really big, heavy pack of meat. Not to mention the food, what everybody shares, but then chocolate bars, so on, so on. <laughs> Getting towards the end of the trip, my backpack shrank in size by a half. I stopped wearing bug spray, because I just didn't shower. And I, didn't <laughs> I stopped eating the candy. And the last few days, uh, we did a solo, which is you go into the woods, in your own area, you go naked. I, or, I went naked. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a day by itself. And I, I felt more healthy than I ever had my whole life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. John Paul, um, from Hollywood, California. It's my first time, so this has been quite an experience. Um, gentlemen, I would like to say Happy Father's Day to you all. Fathers, mothers, and us, we wouldn't be here. So uh, that bless us all. So, um, in the nature of all things in this world, I have found this most profound. Area I've never seen ever, I can never experience. So I want to say thank you for all of you. That just to give me a moment. I'm thinking New York, right? I'm from Hollywood, California. First time in New York. New yeah. York. All right. I'm thinking this concrete, just ugh. excuse my language, but assholes all around. They're gonna treat me. I'm thinking, no, you all are beautiful people, and you are just all oh, just you welcome me in every which way. And I'm like thinking, you know what? This I. I'm very taken with this. So I'm not to waste all your time. I would just like to just say, as the nature of us all, with okay. the animals, I'm a heavy animal lover. <laughs> and honestly, a lot of people always mistaken the animals. Of, they, they don't understand. They think they're stupid. They're, here's one greatest thing you guys got to understand. Every single word that you speak out of your mouth every single day of their life that they sit there and pretend they don't sit there but just lay down, <laughs> you're listening to every single sound, everything that you say, and they pretend stupid. They're the best, they're the best actors, they get what they want to, and they all they have to do is just say when I want to eat, when I want to go outside, and when I'm ready to sleep. But they are such the beautiful little people that once you get to and finally call them on it and call them on this and I promise you all because if you don't know call them on it and I swear to God, I know you listen to me I know you can hear me sit and all of a sudden like okay you know they'll give in they will give in and I promise you you gotta keep on just you gotta pound them you gotta test them every time. Well, when it comes to the wild. When it comes to the wild, and I promise you, when it comes to the wild, as well, they will get to trust you, and you get to trust them. I've been able to pet every single wild animal up there, close by, and I recommend not everyone do that, but it takes time.
friend is Joe Paul. Well, we we'll want wild animals in New York, and, and you see, you're teaming us. We're, uh, we're, we're embarking on this new uh, experiment. This, it's a new church. We just started it 21 Sundays ago. And we, uh, we're learning our beliefs as we go. And we ask you to come to our social forums. Tell us what you think maybe we should believe in the course of each week. And so we've gathered some, what we call the We Believes of this week. We'll come to you from Sister Amber. Amber We believe this week. Evening. Ready? <laughs> we believe that the earth is rotating inside us like a conscience. Amen. Please join with us. We
Hallelujah. Oh, what a night. Oh, well, now you're in the choir. And to Sister Shopa and Sister Toa. Sister Shopa was a very sexy, kind of fascist looking meter maid in the, in the mermaid parade. <laughs> What was, it? what was my ticket? Excessive hotness. Oh, I was unseasonably hot. <laughs> Sister Laura. Ooh, you've been out there. You've been, you've been, you've been conversing with us in public. Amen. You've been, you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been he's sitting down the politicians and the authors. You've been sitting down the activists, and you have been, you have, with your posh accent, you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been getting past our defenses, yeah. and our, uh, you know, we, we start giving it up to you. Yeah. 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 We have, you know, she, she, uh, it starts out as an intellectual conversation involving politics, and, and, and uh, you get to the truth of it, you really do. Yes, yes. And I know you're in a rite of passage right now. Yeah. You're, mo you're moving on. To a new stage, hallelujah! So, so that's good practice. You're leaping out of the audience and onto this stage here because we know you're gonna you're gonna get a, another bullhorn. Let him know. We've been listening to you on Free Speech Television and Air America. And <laughs> other places, right? Other places. What other places? Grit other TV. Places. Grit TV. Grit TV. Grit TV. Amen. Grit. 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 issues in the consumer era. <laughs> Please, give us the grit. I do feel this is a good day for a little canonization because I just came from Netroots Nation in Minneapolis. I was there for a weekend. Uh, it wasn't a weekend, a little bit more than a weekend. I don't get away very often. I thought, who would know, really? I could probably just get away with it and wouldn't have to confess. I thought, it's just once, perhaps. Um, maybe nobody would see me. I wouldn't get recognized. I could just... But I didn't, Reverend. I did not go to the Mall of America. <laughs> From the net roots to the mountaintops that you're all protecting, stop the wars, share the wealth, and uh, can we please save our world? Um, listening to you today, I, I think about why I went into, into journalism and listening to Chris talk about what he had as his motivation. You talked about conversing. I thought that's what journalism was about. Um, and I, as a journalist, went to Northern Ireland and I went to... Uh, Central America, and I went to the Middle East, and I ended up going to Rwanda, and uh, I went to also uh, West Virginia for the Pittston strike, and my job, I thought, was to listen and to hear what people had to say, and there was a, media is a, is a shared, a plural noun, right? It's a collaborative process. Uh, we go, we listen, there's a pact made, we promise something. We promised to tell that story. Mm -hmm. And when I came back that last time from Rwanda, it was worse than it had ever been, middle 90s. Mm -hmm. When I came back with that story, I couldn't really fulfill the promise. I couldn't really tell the story because nobody wanted to listen. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. The story was too grim, reflected too badly on Madeleine Albright and other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, OK, enough of this. It's enough to, uh, it's not enough to simply travel and get the story and to converse. And, enter into that pact. It's not enough to just criticize the corporate media that's not doing its job, doesn't give you conversation, it just gives you commerce, it doesn't give you real faces, it just gives you advertising, it doesn't give you conversation, it just gives you celebrity. Uh, and I thought, let's make our own media. And, um, What the heck, let's see if we can make our own media. And I just want to thank everybody that has helped to make 
media over the years. It is, as I said, a collaborative, cooperative, interactive process, and we in the independent media only do it with your help. So you are our church. I want to thank you so much for your support. And you got to know that while there is a Fox channel, um, no one there speaks for the fox or the wolf or the mountain tops. <laughs> um, I'm excited that while, while the earth doesn't have a channel or an email list or an app, um, it, uh, it does have a church and a choir. Speaking of course, so thank you very much. Two journalist saints over here. Amen. Yes. 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 Sister Laura. This is a, a great way for two incredible journalists to remember uh, all the words to our freedoms from the first amendment.
thank Brother Abraham Lincoln and all those folks that made those Happy magical, Day. wonderful things happen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I think we can join you now. I am a sexy, sweaty singer sitting next to you. All right. uh, I'll be back. How's everybody doing? Seventh inning stretch here? Now stand up a second. Stand up, everybody. Hallelujah. Everybody tell a, uh, tell a, tell a story to the person sitting next to you uh, about your father. Mm -hmm. Tell a story about your dad. My dad looks just like Chris Hedges. As a matter of fact, I think my dad is Chris something in us some Dr. Science some self what was that word that you use? Self, 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 self some, some story that we've stored up <coughs> in our self assembly is excited by their reporting so they may come from a very strange place but they have the skill to anticipate the resident stories that we have inside of ourselves. And then we leave listening to or watching uh, Laura's, Laura's interview show or, or reading um, um, Chris's columns. We, we are moved. We have something in ourselves that rises to meet what they have to tell us. That cycle has been broken with our ultimate storyteller. <coughs> Something has happened. And now the rest of my sermon tonight will be proving a negative. The rest of my story tonight will be, be, be talking about a, a lacuna, an emptiness, an abyss. And all I can do is, is walk up to the edge of it with you and uh, share stories that are up near it. 
We can hold hands and jump into the emptiness, try to make our way back and tr try to catch something out there. But there's a terrible gap that leaves us with this remarkable impasse that we find ourselves at two, in, in, in 2011. The time of maximum, we're told, connectedness and a minimum understanding. We can all talk to each other simultaneously, all the time, anytime. And the earth is actually, actually <coughs> radically changing its ecosystems, its tectonic plates are moving, its climate is changing. In this country we've had 900 tornadoes since the first of the year, 600 in April, six times more than the April in 2010, and yet Bill McKibben said in a Chris, Chris Hedges interview this last week, those tornadoes were, were reported as standalone events, independent, discrete events. There was no relationship among any of them, no context. We could not ask the question why, so we didn't get the story. The earth was not able to tell us the story that I believe we should have heard. I believe, we believe in the Church of Rithaluia. <laughs> We're leaping here. We have a leap of faith here. We believe the earth is trying to express something to us. But those, those, those 600 tornadoes, especially Tuscaloosa and Joplin, of course, they were reported and the commercial storytelling apparatus descended upon them and they became tabloids, they became, they became sentimental, uh, the, the, uh, the handsome, sort of with the on-purpose casual hair people with the microphones were going up to people who were distraught and getting these, these, these heartrending confessions from them, the victims, the heroes, the the, 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 the healers, the people who were rushing in to, to help the injured, the, the, all of it was ordered and gradually in each case the earth became less and less a character in the story. Less and less the author of the story. <laughs> by the end of a couple days you think, well the, the earth didn't have that much to do with Joplin. You know, that was a tornado. As if a tornado is some sort of Hollywood Jean-Paul, Jean some sort of Hollywood uh, transformer or something, some sort of, some sort of uh, you know, new uh, Duke Nukem forever character <laughs> that just came out of nowhere, no context. I, in my entire life, I've never lived in a... Lena. I've never had a 14-year-old month old daughter before. <laughs> She'll be 14 years old very soon. But I think something about my sermon upset me. Mm -hmm. I've never ever lived, I, I wonder if any of you feel this way as well. I've never lived in, in a, walked around inside my culture and felt that the basis of how people tell each other information has been this absurd. <laughs> this absurd. Just pick up the art section of the New York Times, brimming with energized, happy, funded careers. <laughs> Nothing about the earth up there. And no review of our work either. <laughs>
<laughs> we are now basically unable to follow cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect through a cycle. The obvious example that we see every day is the economy. We're a part of an unprecedented shift of money to a very small group of people. Uh, they say that it's, that it's more extreme than the robber baron period of the 1890s. And yet every single day we are watching our effort to make good government, to pool our resources and to have libraries and have schools and have hospitals and have the things that we all need, the human services we all need, we're told repeatedly that we're broke, that we have no money, and we can't raise taxes because that's bad for jobs. Just repeatedly, every day, it's a mantra, it's a mantra. The Tea Party learned it, the corporations learned it, the politicians learned it, everybody says it again and again and again, and it, it has never been, as the, it has never been proven. It, 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 it's basically a lie. It's a self-serving lie by those corporations. That's not what causes jobs. No. Giving tax money back to the rich does not create jobs. Hallelujah. That's yeah. obvious. Yeah. That's yeah. obvious. Yeah. So many Americans are unable to follow the money. There's a gap there. There's a gap. Let's see, I made this money. I pay my taxes. Where does it go? It goes to, well, everything we're supposed to be paying for is falling apart. And these 5% are now up to 43% of all wealth in this country. What? So you, 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 there's a gap. We're not, we're not following the circle around. The cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. That, that is no longer continuous. There's a break in the story. There's a disabling. Part of that break, a part of that break, is that we can't go into public space anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you may have been a little bit confused that we're supposed to be an Earth Alleluia church here. And every other song, we're singing about public space in the First Amendment. But, you know, we're the Earth Alleluia church after 12 years of being the stop shopping church. Amen. And we have been in public space being arrested all the time. Right. And we happen to believe, we happen to believe that you can't just sit in front of your computer. Nothing will change. That's right. That's right. We must embody our change in public space. The earth, the earth is a commons that we share with life. We are made of the earth. The earth is not private property. The earth is a place that we share. Private property is an artificial false construction. The Wall Street bankers that shoot value across borders and their buddies, the security officials that stop people at those borders, they're making something else up here. And they are arguing that it creates prosperity. It just, it, it just creates devastation and heartache. I think it creates food riots. I think it, I think it pulls people out of, the, out, of their, out of their natural world. And now we have millions and millions and millions of people in mass migrations. We, have, we, we are on the edge of worldwide chaos. It's already happening. The, 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 the wheat is, is, is growing thin. London calling! It's... it's, 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 it's it's we are we are we are we are in this sort of equipoise right now. We we are Wiley e. Coyote. He's been off the edge of the cliff for some time. <laughs> and the audience member, you know, you and I at the age of seven are sitting there watching him, and he's looking at us, and he's like having a little you know monologue with us. And he doesn't realize that fern, the size of a postage stamp near his toe, is actually two miles down, and he's about to fall, fall a long ways. <laughs> And then he finally does. And what happens is that his hat stays up there and kind of 
trembles in the air for just a moment. This is a signature of that bit, amen, praise be. But I digress! <laughs> our hearts that somehow, somehow we've got to be able to go down to the village commons and shout, EMERGENCY! Yes. Yes. The earth! Yes. Make it the earth! There's too much heat in the atmosphere! Yes. Stop that coal-fired power plant now! Yes. Yes. How did that basic story that's a basic story. It's a quick story. It's the emergency story. We need a planet crier now on every corner. We need to be able. We need to be able to to walk up to each other and say, "Okay, now's the time for action." And that's 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 a completion of a story. You see, that's a, that's the completion of a story. That story has a a, a moat through cut through it right now by somebody who's very strategic. You know being in the Stop Shopping Church for 12 years. We think it's corporate marketing. We think that thousands of corporate marketing events are exploding in our brains every day. And then and, and that there are strategical amnesia patterns that we have that, that come down into us that are consciously placed here. Almost like cybernetic add-ons or something. We think we may be much more conscious and strategical from Coca-Cola and McDonald's and all the rest of them. Then we realize but we are unable in New York City, we are really unable to go down to the corner and shout action. We get arrested right away. But we also just don't listen to each other. We don't shout it, and we don't hear it. Now we're coming to the 10th anniversary of 9-11. We've got to have a First Amendment festival in Union Square in September. We have to recite the First Amendment together in Union Square. Yes. I'm there. The First Amendment is back. Are you there? Yes. The First sitting there watching him and he's looking at us and he's like having a little you know monologue with us and he doesn't realize that fern the size of a postage stamp near his toe is actually two miles down and he's about to fall fall a long ways <laughs> and then he finally does and what happens is that his hat stays up there and kind of <laughs> trembles in the air for just a moment this is a signature of that bit amen praise be but i digress <laughs> trying to tell us real stories right now so that we don't we don't fall right. okay. and that is about where we're where we are right now we're, we're we're trying to keep we're trying to keep ourselves up in the air like wild and coyote we're we're trying to tell stories that don't have anything to do with the fact that gra gravity is about to yank our ass two miles down <laughs> you know we're, we're keeping a loft in a kind of entertainment bubble now, you know, I, mean, I, don't, I don't just mean Hollywood, Jean Paul, I also mean just America. I mean, I, I, the idea of America is like an entertainment now. Yes. It's been rendered so sentimental. And we just have these permanent wars that are like video games, and we just watch them once in a while. We have no idea how to stop them. And it, it's just our tax money is going to kill children every day. We kind of know that in a vague sort of way, but we can't really face that. It's a video game we watch. We're in an entertainment. Uh, we're floating up in entertainment right now, and, and once in a while, you know, at the end of a party underneath the kitchen table with Heineken's, we're with a good friend, and something breaks through, and we say, wow, it really is fucked, isn't it? Laura and 
Chris as our saints tonight because we really we're we're we're, we're coming to the end of our 22 Sundays and and uh, we're going to take the Earth Alleluia worship show to Europe now and we, we we feel we feel we feel that we want to wrap up the, the broadest themes. What have we come to in this experimental church? What what have we come to understand together in this strange conversation that we're having in these this series of songs and made up rituals and believing in our hearts that somehow, somehow we've got to be able to go down to the village commons and shout, Emergency! Yes. Yes. The earth! Yes, make it point. The earth! Mm. There's too much heat in the atmosphere! Yes. Stop that coal fire power plant now! Yes. Story. It's a quick story. It's the emergency story. We need a planet crier now on every corner. We need to be able. We need to be able to to walk up to each other and say, "Okay, now's the time for action." And that's 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 the completion of a story. You see, that's a, that's the completion of a story. That story has a, a moat through cut through it right now by somebody who's very strategic. Being in the Stop Shopping Church for 12 years, we think it's corporate marketing. We think that thousands of corporate marketing events are exploding in our brains every day, and then and, and that there are strategical amnesia patterns that we have that, that come down into us that are consciously placed here, almost like cybernetic add-ons or something. We think maybe we may be much more conscious and strategical from Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and all the rest of them than we realize. But we are unable in New York City, we are really unable to go down to the corner and shout action. We get arrested right away. But we also just don't listen to each other. We don't shout it, and we don't hear it. Now we're coming to the 10th anniversary of 9-11. We've got to have a First Amendment fest. In Union Square. Yeah. In September. Yeah. Recite the First Amendment together in Union Square. Yeah, I'm there. The First Amendment is back. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Congress will make no law. Impact. 